All right, Module 3, Part 2 has one objective, and it's going to be to factor by finding the greatest common factor, or what I'm going to reference the GCF for short. You'll hear me say that a lot. So the rest of Algebra 2 deals with factoring. So factoring is a very important skill to master, and it all begins with the greatest common factor. That will be the first step to consider from now on. Does it have a greatest common factor? Do the terms listed in a polynomial have a greatest common factor? If so, you need to factor it out. And so in this first video, we're just going to work on the skill of finding the greatest common factor. And then in the next video, we're going to actually factor a greatest common factor out of a binomial. So a couple notes before we get going with examples. The first is rewriting an expression as the product of its factors or undistributing or the opposite of multiplying binomials is factoring. And then the next one, the largest quantity that is indeed a factor of all the integers or polynomials involved, is what we just talked about, the greatest common factor. Or what I'm going to say, the GCF. GCF. So, does that look like a C? I was going to model example one and then example two. It says to find the GCF of each list of numbers. Now you'll hear me say the word or the word term a lot between pieces as well. And so we can consider 12 and 8 to be terms, x cubed and x to the seventh to be terms, and then down here in this example three, 15x squared and 100 to be terms. I need to find the greatest common factor, if I was going to analyze this information that's given me, between 12 and 8. So I have 12 and I have 8. Now, the way I'm going to show you how to do this, if your brain is able to just jump to a number that goes into both, that is the biggest, then go ahead and use that skill. If not, then in order to factor, I'm going to use what's called a factor tree. Now, all numbers have factors unless they're prime. In this case, 12 and 8 are not prime so they do indeed have factors. Factors are just numbers that if multiplied with each other, they will equal that number. They're numbers that go into the specific number. So I need numbers that go into 12. In this case, 12 divided by, let's say, 3 is 4. So 12 divided by 3 equals 4, and 3 and 4 are factors of 12. I can break 4 down. 3 doesn't break down anymore, but 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. So 12 is now factored completely. Let's try 8. 8 can be divided by 2. It's an even number. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 times 4, there are factors of 8, they equal 8. I can break down 4 as well into 2 and 2. So both numbers are indeed factored all the way. Prime factorization. Now, the next step is to look for the number that is the largest that is in common with both. If you see, they both have 2's that are in common, but there is a bigger number 4 that is in common between 2. So 4 in this case is the GCF of 12 and 8. So go ahead and try part B on your own after this video just to practice this skill. Once you've done that, please raise your hand and I'll come check it to make sure we're rolling because again, finding the GCF is very important. Now for example 2, I'm going to do part A and B because they're a little different. Uh, but they work with variables. Variables are, once you see it, are pretty easy to work with because it's just how many x's are involved with each. So in this case, x to the cube power means that I'm multiplying x times x times x. So there's three x's in that piece. x to the sevenths means x seven times. So what's in common between three and seven? I can only have in common three from each piece because this one over here only has three. So the greatest common factor of these variables is x to the third. Another way to look at it, the smallest variable listed, the smallest power listed between variables is going to be your GCF for variables. In this case, x to the third was the smallest, so that's my GCF. Moving on to part B to end this video. Now, if you notice, part B has coefficients, 6 and 4, and variables, x to the 5th, x to the 3rd. So I need to factor 
on the GCF between 6 and 4, and then the variables after that. So if I was going to, every time I see this, I need to first look, if I was going to think and try to figure this out, first look at the numbers, 6 and 4, factor that, then the variables. And so that's what I'm going to do here first. 6 has a factor of 2, 2 times 3 is 6, that's factored. 4 is 2 times 2. The only number in common are the 2's. So the GCF of my numbers is 2. Now, let's do the variables. This, x to the fifth, has 5x's. And this has 3x's. So the only thing in common, the biggest number of x's that is common, is in common is indeed 3x's. So I'm left with the GCF of 2x cubed. Now this is the most important skill to find because you will always be listed coefficients and variables. So you have to find the GCF for both and recognize that it's the combination of both of them that exists, 2x cubed, as your final greatest common factor. Now, again, after this video, try part B and then move on to the next video where I actually show you how to factor the GCF out of a quadratic.